Hello, welcome to the Construction Show by Crownsman. Uh, we're here with General Kinematics in their booth at Con Expo. We're going to cover, we're going to highlight a couple different units of theirs today that are actually on the grounds, two of which you see be, uh, behind me. Um, we're going to start off with Bob Huffer. He's the Territory Sales Manager at General Kinematics. And then we're going to have Elliot Tribble. He is the Market Director for Aggregate for them. So, um, okay, let's get the interview started. Bob, good to have you on the show. Yep, welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me, Jared. Uh, okay. Let's, well, let's, I mean, we're out here side outside people walking ev- thousands right. of people walking everywhere. Um, how's the show been so far? Actually, uh, very busy, which is a great sign. We were here three years ago and it wasn't so busy. So, uh, it's great to come back. Yeah. What and, happened three years? I can't, <laughs> I don't think we have to go back to that <laughs> yeah. three year. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Right. But, uh, no, we've had some great traffic, great conversations. Uh, really great to see some of our, our customers and, uh, also new, new people to talk to on projects. Yeah. Is there, is, I mean, this, this spot that you're in, um, I should actually get us to take, we should take a picture of it so we can actually show the audience the location. I mean, you've got. Yeah. Literally thousands of people walking by you right now. Absolutely. I, I Last number I heard was 130-something registrants. So uh, we definitely are on uh, one of the main thoroughfares here, yeah, yeah. right at the base of the monorail. I mean, we've got a terrific spot. Uh, is, are the people that are coming and talking to you, are they pretty up-to-date on the equipment, or is there a lot of even people that maybe even don't know you for whatever reason? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Heather, uh, who helped us uh, with the marketing side and the design of the booth, we really divided the booth into two pieces, right? Mm-hmm. So half the booth that we see behind us, that's our C&D side. The other half is focused to C&D being construction demolition and the other half being uh, aggregate focused. Um, so let, let's focus on the C&D side then. Uh, sure. let, let's just go. Let's not make the audience wait. What are the two units we're seeing behind us? Yeah, so the the red machine, that's the uh, GK Distoner. So that's a 48-inch wide machine. Uh, the GK Distoner, uh, it makes a separation by density, uh, makes a separation by blowing air into uh, the material as it's being conveyed through mm-hmm. it. And that air uh, then blows the lighter material up over an opening, and that heavy material drops out a discharge point. So you're making two separations with that material. And and why why this particular uh, this unit for this event? Yeah, great question. This is really a... a a, a fantastic machine for the construction demolition market space. And uh, in the market space there, they really are going after a clean rock, a clean aggregate product uh, for two reasons. One, they need to take that rock and aggregate out of their uh, waste stream to reduce any weight going to the landfill. Uh, and secondly, that's a marketable material that rock and mm-hmm. aggregate they yeah. can pull out that's clean. They can then crush and sell and, and also get a return on that as an end market. So you have all the people walking by. Let, let's say the... Let, let's say a, a top five people you want to talk to uh, out of the thousands doing it. Um, are you, uh, what would be some of their key questions that they'd actually ask you about this unit if they don't know it? Sure. There's, uh, I mean, I think one of the biggest keys is we make a lot of different sizes and models for this distoner. Yeah. Single knife, dual knife, 48 wide, 72 wide. You know, really it's what's the right fit for me? You know, is it, uh, is it this machine? Is it something bigger or smaller? And that really goes back to the tonnage, the capacity that they're going to, process and uh, run through that machine. So, and, uh, you know, secondarily, I would say another point is um, making sure the material that's presented to the distoner is presented in the best possible way so the machine can do its job uh, Mm -hmm. as, as functionally as possible. Let's talk about our heavy industry tour brought to you by Savannah Equipment, supplying mining equipment worldwide. We are heading to events across North America, Africa, and Australia, and filming episodes on location. Email us at info at crownsman.com to be part of our Crownsman's Heavy Industry World Tour. Based in Southern California, Enhanced Scanning has performed thousands of projects on construction sites across the U.S. in an effort to help its customers find the unfindable. Enhanced Scanning combines ground-penetrating radar, laser scanning, and drone inspection services to provide comprehensive deliverables for their customers' fast-paced timelines, all without sacrificing quality or communication. To learn more, you can visit them at EnhancedScanning.com or find them on LinkedIn at Enhanced Scanning. With Fender Dunlop, you know you are getting the best conveyor belting in the market. That's because they ensure the integrity of their conveyor belting by monitoring each step of the manufacturing process in their North American facilities. Focused attention is given to each belting order to guarantee that they produce a belt that will assist the customer in reducing operation costs, maximizing uptime, and improving revenue. Visit FenderDunlopAmericas.com to learn more. Let's step back, uh, I don't know, let's say 20, 30 years. Um, What what is... 
what would these machines be for compared to what they are now? And just where, where is the, where are the improvements um, that I'm sure you're sort of promoting here? Sure. I, you know, the, uh, the distoner itself has been kind of a rock solid machine. Yeah. I mean, there's been some improvements to it, but I'll be honest, it's one of those machines that, uh, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's, uh, it's been a really good uh, telling model for us over that course of 30 years, but we have made some improvements in how the airflow comes through the machine, how the airflow is distributed across the uh, air knife and through the fluidizer more equally. That helps you get a better uh, separation across the full width of the machine rather than maybe short circuiting some of the air in other places. Yeah. We've done some other improvements with some of our uh, our motors, uh, our springs, some of the other, comp you know, other features uh, component wise, some of the rubber marshmallow springs for a soft isolation on the machine. Good, good, easy start stops. Yeah. Things like that. Uh, what about this unit? Let's talk a bit about this. Yeah, so this, uh, the blue machine you see behind you, the two of them, uh, that's part of our new Tough Man line. Uh, so that that has come on board here in the last four, four to five years. And uh, we've really taken that to kind of a higher level as well. We're, we're now more or less redesigning some of those machines, mm. um, and or we have, I'd say. Uh, and really, we've got a, a belt conveyor here, a 24-inch wide uh, belt conveyor feeding a small three three foot by uh, 10 foot uh, rotary trommel. Yeah, who's who's in the market for this? What are they? What, what's the application? Yeah, I mean the way this just shows on the on the show floor, this would be a very light duty type yeah. application. Uh, in some cases, we're working with uh, guys that are in the hemp market, uh, where they're just trying to separate some of the seeds or sticks from some of right. that hemp material. This this would kind of be a really good fit for that. Kind of breeze through it. A low low tonnage, light light material. Yeah, uh, yeah, something like that. Does it uh, does it scale up this unit? How what is it, what's the size range for? Yeah, this? absolutely. So the uh, let's just talk trommel first. So uh, this is probably a one of the smaller size, a three foot diameter by ten. Mm -hmm. Scales all the way up to uh, six foot by thirty, uh, six foot diameter by thirty foot long. Um, so is this is this sort of an expansion? You know, taking on this uh, this brand and and bringing it into the, the I guess the family. Um, right. Is it is that a push to expand into that C and D market? I think it, it is in some ways, yes. Uh, it, it just gives us more of an offering. Uh, yeah. for, for example, if uh, if we're gonna if a customer needed a distoner, he may need a belt that feeds the distoner, or he may need a belt that takes the rock away from the distoner. So that's that's something that now we can have a little bit more of an offering. So we can put a little package together and and then deliver a total solution rather than maybe a piece here or a piece there. Well, and you're going you're direct to market, right? Correct. You, yeah. So Absolutely. that so when you're talking to people, you're you're actually. You're actually selling the units from here to them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you give us what's the sort of full line that General Kinematics is offering? Yeah. In, so in what, the CND side. In the CND side, uh, the, there's really some key processing machines for us, uh, and those keys probably start kind of just walking through a typical system. Would be some some form of a primary finger screen. Mm. So that primary finger screen is going to make uh, that first size separation of somewhere around six to eight inches in size. Uh, and this is, let's say, on a larger CND processing line. Uh, that larger material typically goes up to a, a manual picking line, and then that uh, finer material, this minus eight inch, let's call it, uh, would go to what we call a B line, uh, and that would need a secondary screen, which we can also provide as a as a secondary screen. Uh, now that's going to make a fines separation, so it'll it'll remove roughly the inch and a half to two inch material. So now we've got a fraction size that's minus eight plus, let's say, two inches. Mm -hmm. And then that material is the perfect material to go into something like the distoner. Just going back to that business development side, at this event, do, because it's, so, it's just the scale of it. Right. I mean, it, people, anybody who knows it, but if you haven't been here, I mean, the, the size is just, it's, I think it's seven different wings now yes. with the outside one. Like, it's just so big. Yep. Do people... Um, is there a lot of just introducing people now to, I mean, four or five years is not that long to have a new product line. Right. It's really not. No, actually, you're right. Uh, even a lot of our existing customers, a lot of them coming up and just seeing this for the first time, to be honest. You know, it's uh, it's not. Well, it's especially not in person. In person, exactly. Right. right. Yeah. Or hearing about it and having that yeah. conversation. Exactly. Uh, so that is kind of interesting and obviously new people, anybody new to general kinematics, uh, you know, they're just learning about us for the first time as well, but they're seeing a little bit more of a, a wider offering than we had before. Uh, I just wanted to get a quick understanding too about the services, um, about once people buy the equipment, uh, what you're offering in that stream. Sure. 
uh, with, with our equipment, uh, we can offer either a demolition services, removal of or site preparation of some of the some of the needs to bring the new machinery in, uh, some of the installation services, uh, our technical uh, service people, whether that's a troubleshooting uh, situation of existing equipment or just oversight of the install and the project of something new going in. Uh, and all the way through the startup and commissioning to ensure we're delivering on what what it was we were promising. So uh, we've really expanded some of those offerings, and uh, you know that's that's been a I think a, a growing need in our market space. Uh, so I think we're just fulfilling that need. Well, it's really there's the we were talking off air. There is there's so much um, information out there that now it's we're in a, a world of information overload, right? And so now it's that hands on really walking people through where parts, all this sort of stuff. It's just so key to be right, kind of right on the ground with them. No, you're absolutely right. You know, we've uh, we've kind of changed some of the, some, uh, how we go and service some of our customers on different levels and uh, us being closer to our customers directly yeah. has been nothing but um, a positive change and us getting more engaged and, and us being more aware of what's happening at their facilities and, and offering improvements when it's when it's merited, you know, and that's, that's really driven a, a strong customer base for us. Before we, uh, I, we've got to keep our segment short because we got to jump over to Understood. Elliot. But um, where do you, what's the overall sort of value system that you see driving it? I mean, I've, I've been here, I've been in your booth now because we're setting up and that and you sort right. of see, we. I think General Kinematics has been on our show twice before already. Um, there's definitely a technical focus, very engaged. Um, and what do you sort of is is that value system that's driving that does connect everything that you're doing? Yeah, no, great, great question. I, um, you know, really the history of general kinematics, uh, I think, is really where that comes from, and it stems all the way back to you know the first generation. We're we're into our third generation uh, ownership now mm. with uh, Thomas Shoot, and uh, I've been with the company for 29 years. Uh, you, yeah, wow. and so I've had the opportunity to see all three of those generations. Which I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it was. Uh, it's really, you see how the culture of the company really, really didn't change, you know, over that 65 years, they've been very loyal to their, to their employees. We've, we've always You've delivered on a team of people promised. that have been with a long time. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm, you know, even at 29 years, uh, even in our booth today, we've got guys that are 40, 40 plus a handful yeah. of them. So, um, and, and that's, that's just a sign, uh, cause you don't hear about a lot, a lot of those kinds of tenures yeah. out of the industry today. So, uh, that to me, that's a sign you're happy where you're at and things are just, you know, culture wise, things are good. Um, we've, we've grown quite a bit in the last two years, yeah. you know, overall. So, uh, all of that is just moving in a very positive direction. For is us. the C&D sp space, uh, I, I'll keep this to the last question. Is that yeah. space growing pretty, pretty well right now? Yeah, it is. It's steady. You know, I mean, uh, and that steady growth happens at, at different times, but, uh, there's certainly, uh, certainly customers out there that are, that are taking big steps and yeah. uh, others making smaller improvements and changes. So, um, we've been very fortunate to stay on the front edge of that and uh, keep our keep our strong reputation in that market space. Yes. Well, um, I, I'm sorry, I got to kick you out. Thank That's you. All, right. all good. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Appreciate it. Zero Knox is leading the electrification of off-highway commercial and industrial vehicles. They provide a platform for clean energy technology to get to market through powertrain solutions, development partnerships, and electrification kit solutions for conversions. Reduce carbon emissions without diminishing vehicle performance or being restricted by high costs. Partner with Zero Knox, like many of the world's leading OEMs, as they solve challenges across multiple continents with their cleaner and higher performing technology. Zero Knox solutions are designed and engineered in America with offices in Porterville, California. Learn more at zeronox.com. Dayquip specializes in the design and manufacturing of attachments for all makes and models of compact excavators, wheel loaders, crawl do dozers, and articulated dump trucks. You can choose from any of their engineered attachments, or they can design and build to your specifications. All of their products can be shipped anywhere in North America, hassle-free. If you don't see it, just ask and they will build it. Check out their website, www.dayquip.com, or email them, info at dayquip.com, for sales, quotes, and support. DMH manufactures CNC lathes for seal production, semi-finished materials for seal manufacturing, as well as machine seals. But they are much more than a seal manufacturer. They supply the technology for seal manufacturing in the form of machine seal software and tooling technology. Altogether, this allows the simple manufacturing of nearly every seal within the shortest amount of time. 
The products are also used in a wide range of industries such as mobile hydraulics, mining industry, heavy industry machinery, oil and gas, wind energy, renewable energy, aviation, food and, and pharmaceutical industry, transportation, and automotive industry. To learn more, you can visit them at dmh.at. Seal Technologies of the Future, already today. Elliot, welcome to the show. Good to have you on. Nice to be here. Uh, so for, for the second half of the show, we moved around to the other side. Um, we, you've got a busy spot here. We talked about it with Bob a little bit. Um, what is your sort of focus here on oh, the show? Okay, so my, my main focus has been on the aggregate division. So GK um, really the past year has decided to go real strongly into the aggregate market. Mm. Um, they brought me on board in the last seven months and uh, to lead their aggregate division. Okay. Um, this, this type of event, um, have you, have, has there been a busier event that you've been to? No, this is my uh, third con expo that I've, I've been to in my career. And this is the busiest one by far. Yeah. Um, similar to 2017, you know, maybe, you know, 10% uh, busier or so I, I would just guess off the, the foot traffic, but much busier than the, the 2020 show. What is, uh, what's the unit we got uh, set up behind yeah, us so, here? So right behind us, we have our newest uh, product offering. It's a 6x16 uh, triple triple deck incline screen. Um, so we're we're excited to have it here and, and ready to see it in operation. What is, uh, can you walk us through getting to this machine? I know a lot of updates, you know, we've been talking off air and that. Um, what what are some of the updates that sort of making this machine get to the next level, and and what also went into developing it that way? Yeah, so the, to get into the development side, we we met with several customers, really dove into their their maintenance aspects mm -hmm. and some of the serviceability issues that they run into um, with with our changing workforce, with just parts availability, um, downtime. You know, they, everyone has limited uh, time to get get equipment repaired. So we really we really attack this market. Uh, from a serviceability standpoint and a maintenance standpoint. How do you go, by the way, to the audience, if you're hearing like some helicopter, we are outside at a live event, so you're going to hear a little bit of noise in the background. It's, it's all part of the show. But um, if, uh, how do you go about getting that feedback from clients? Do you, are you, are you, is it as simple as, hey, we're trying to get yeah. better, we're trying to make it better? Yeah, How's absolutely. You know, you, you, you put boots on the ground and you go in person and talk to these guys and, and really figure out not just, at the CEO level, but you go talk to the guys in the plant yeah. and figure out what's, what issues are you having? What could be improved on? What would you like to see different? Um, if you go in there and try to be, you know, X, Y, Z company and, and do it the exact same way, you're not going to succeed. Right. Um, you, we, we pride ourselves on innovation and pride ourselves on trying to, to improve a product. What do you, it was the feedback, uh, uh, I mean, I'm sure you weren't talking to people with just your units in them. Uh, was the feedback on these types of machines, was it consistent of what they were looking for? It really was. You know, it was a lot of similar designs in our in our industry on the equipment side, on the especially the vibrating equipment. So a lot of the customers, they, they had issues, you know, when they would have downtime or they'd have bearing failures. Yeah. And then, um, with an inexperienced staff, as, you know, a lot of our more experienced mechanics have retired out of our industry, a lot of shortcuts were begun to take or, mm -hmm. or things that, you know, people just didn't know it's, it's, you know, you learn by experience in this industry. So when we'd hear about a bearing failure and, and a customer say, Hey, we didn't know we were, you know, didn't get the shaft completely clean or we didn't, didn't drain the oil and clean the clean everything out the way we should have. And then yeah. we, we had a overnight, another set of bearings and a housing. Then mm -hmm. we were down again for another day. You know, that yeah. was, that was something that we really looked at. And from, from our standpoint, you know, we went, well, we can develop a, a cartridge style bearing insert and we can tie it together with our, our cartridge shafts and all the feedback after we, we put the design out there, we talked to customers again, they said, we don't know why this wouldn't work, you know, mm -hmm. so we can unbolt this, replace it, put it right back in and then we can repair mm -hmm. what we just taken out or we can repair what's in the screen. Right. Um, from a serviceability standpoint, if, you know, they really took at it as this is a, an easier design for us to work on. We don't have to pull a, a, a real heavy shaft out through a tube, you know, on a, on a two foot wide deck yeah. or on a man lift. So this is a, you know, we, we wanted to provide something different, but still have a great solution. Yeah. Well, even like the, even the Duradeck that you have, that's a pretty, that's pretty nice because, um, 
I, I've worked on like these old screens before, and um, they're just one big solid piece. Right. So when once it damaged, it turned into a mess. Um, in these, you're, these are these are like little little yeah yeah. Squares. So it's a uh, uh, modular design where we'll do different size panels for what the customers after to either retrofit what they currently have mm -hmm. or what um, or what they want to put in the screen. So we offer it in a in a rubber one by two insert or a one by one insert in various uh, locking styles. And we're, we're very excited about that. It's something we launched uh, this past year. And oh, that's not, I didn't realize it was yeah. that new. Yes, it's that, that new for us. It's uh, some, some, again, competitive companies in the market that do something similar. But it's a new product for us. And we feel like it uh, allows us to be a, a one-stop shop for your vibratory equipment and your right. screening needs because not everyone offers a, a media of their own. Right. And that's that ongoing maintenance as the it is. equipment, you know, 10 it years is. from now, you're still using it. Correct. Right? Correct. Is that, uh, how does this configure? Is this like, does this come in a two deck? Is that, or is this, this particular one that's behind us, is this sort of fixed as a, as a three deck? Uh, so this one's a three deck. It depends on the customer's application. We, um, we'll do two, three and, and four deck designs. Okay. Um, and that, that's probably the four deck is, is our limitation just out of room. Um, and, and in my experience, there, there hasn't been a need to go, you know, any, any, really much more beyond a three deck, but mm -hmm. we are capable of doing a, a four deck machine as well. And then what would the size, is, is this is a six by 16. Yeah. Is that, is there a size range of? Yeah. So what we're doing the, the industry standard sizes. So basically from a, say a five by 12, all the way to a eight by 24, maybe okay. a 10 by 24 in the size range. But yeah, what is, uh, just, I just want to kind of walk through, like you already mentioned the bearings. We talked about the screens. But then there's like the spray system on it and like, you know, just all of that. Can you just kind yeah. of walk us through, has all of that sort of been tweaked, upgraded and, and or, or is it that? Has, it's a, uh, all of this, what, what we've done on our, well, I'll just start with our drive on our motor system. So we have customers that have issues with a, a certain mounts, you know, where they might, you, you walk up to a screen and they have a come along, you know, torqued sitting there on the deck. So we kept looking at that and said, man, there's got to be a better way to do this. Mm -hmm. So we, we decided to do a direct drive drive shaft into the, our bearing cartridges and then put our motor on a slide. So the motor's not moving anymore. It's just a, a, a barn style shaft that's taking the, the movement out of the screen. Mm. So again, uh, all day today, as I've been showing the screen this week, everybody comes up to us and said, man, that's a lot. That looks like it's a lot easier to, to work on. It's right. a lot yeah. easier to maintain than yeah. what we currently have. Um, same thing, you know, kind of getting back to the bearings again, having two bearings per side, it's, it's helping mm. support the side sheet stronger. It's right. You know, it's when they see the screen, how balanced and how smooth this thing's running out here mm -hmm. today It's it's really turning a lot of heads. Um, and then you, you get into our spray system. So we work, we work closely with the customers again on say what kind of spray system, how much gallons per minute are you after, you know, how many nozzles, how many spray bars, you know, what are you looking to do? And, you know, we're, we want to work directly with the customers. We like getting their feedback. We want their input because at the end of the day, they're the ones that's, that's operating it, you know, for the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they're not happy with it, then, then it's a reflection on us. We want everyone when they receive our equipment to be pleased with it. The, uh, just to wrap up the interview, I was just wondering about installation. Um, obviously if it's a new, if it's a new build, then, you know, you're building it from the ground, spec'd out and it's right. all good to go. But um, what about people that are actually looking to swap out systems? Yeah. So we'll, we'll come out and measure their, their current system and we'll match footprint. We'll, we'll match the deck, uh, the deck spacings, the feed so point, dick charge points. Okay. Yeah. So, so we'll put it on their frame or we can provide our own or our own base frame as well. Um, that way it says minimal, uh, adverse conditions for them whenever they go to replace it as possible. Right. Yeah. So is that, uh, I mean, with these systems, you know, you know, all the, you know, less maintenance and things like that. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing as you keep pushing to the market, you're going to see, Oh, we've lost the sun for a minute. Right. Um, the, uh, that's probably going to be a big push in the market, right? It yeah. will be. I mean, oh, if, no. if we can't replace anybody's equipment, if we're only going after new installs, we, we won't be successful. So right. we, we knew that going into it, that, you know, 90% of our business is going to be replacement screens. Um, yes, you know, that, that's where the market's at. Yeah. Would you, established. would you say just to wrap up the, the, would the bearings be, would that be the big selling point? Do you think it is, uh, it's really been the, the bearings and, and our uh, drive system. Yeah. Uh, it's been showing really well that every, the, the maintenance items that we've attacked has really attracted the customer's yeah. attention to this, to the screen. It's such a good approach. I mean, that's, it's, uh, 
Yeah. I, I mean, I've talked to multiple people from your team. You've, General Kinematics has been on the show a couple of times and it's just a very consistent approach to look for that solution. And I, I know that sort of everybody promotes that, but right. some companies you can tell it's actually baked into the culture. You, you truly can. Uh, when I, when I came here and you, you start looking at some of our mining screens and some of the things we're doing in the foundry industry and recycling industry that I've never seen before, you know, some of our two mass technology, I've never seen it on the scale mm-hmm. of size that, that general kinematics does. It's, it's an extremely impressive company when it comes to vibratory equipment. Yeah, you know, it's, it's awesome. And thank you for letting us kind of be a small part of this, uh, this show with you. No, no, I sure do appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. And thank you everybody for watching. That'll wrap up the episode. Of course, we'll have links to all the items we featured here today and a uh, link to general kinematics. Thank you to them for coming on the show. Thank you for all the support. We will see you on the next episode of the construction show. Yeah.